Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everyone. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. Our guest today is Dennis Patoko. You know, you and I know, the listeners know, that I'm always talking about our purpose on this earth is for the benefit of others. And I would say that Dennis Patoko epitomizes that point of view. Everything Dennis does is carried out for good. He puts it in quotes. I will just say it's for good as opposed for for profit. Founded upon his belief that it's time to rediscover humanity at its best. Dennis has thousands of people who participate in his 32, get this people, 32 LinkedIn groups, 200,000 and counting, and a Facebook group with, oh, a mere 20,000 members. So I welcome to the show the one and only Dennis Patoko. Joanne, thank you for that very thoughtful introduction. You know, I've been on a lot of uh, podcasts before. This is the one I've been most excited about, not just because you've got such a remarkable reach, but you're one of those few podcasters that it's a conversation versus an interrogation. And uh, that just fits so nicely with how we operate. I appreciate that. Thank you. So you're here today for a specific purpose. And before we get to the purpose of why you're here, give a little background to our listeners as to how you got here. I mean, we we don't wake up, you know, at the age of six. Some people do. Maybe Elon Musk did. But I didn't wake up early in age and say, I'm going to help people find their true self. I'm going to help people do this, that and the other thing. It comes gradually and it comes as it is presented to us. So how did you get here, Dennis? Great question. You know, there was a movie many years ago that was called The Accidental Tours. Let me just call myself the accidental uh, publisher, and I'll tell you how I got there now. I, I grew up in Pittsburgh, one of eight children, Italian Catholic family. There was no vision of college. Uh, so our quest was to find our way from high school into life. Uh, many people that stayed in Pittsburgh would go to work for the steel mills back then. I and all my brothers, my four brothers, decided the best way out of Dodge, as they say, was to join the service. So I joined the Air Force, and that was right out of high school, 17 years old. I uh, spent my time in the Air Force about four years during the Vietnam era. And then as I got out of Air Force, um, there was a placement program finding jobs for people like me, and they put me into a job in banking. I spent 30 years in banking, and as I've said to many people, I've spent 30 years doing what I didn't want to do so I could finally, hopefully, have choices to do what I really wanted to do. Ultimately, I did progress in banking as one of those jobs that if that's what you're going to do and you don't have a college education, you really need to work harder. And I, I was the guy, Joanne, that was always volunteering because I had to go places people wouldn't go, travel. Uh, I didn't have a family at the time, so I did that. Made my way into the executive ranks, as I, as they say, and ultimately got to the point where you can't see my hand, but I had it up to here. And like many people, I wanted to branch out and do something on my own. <clears throat> I ended up uh, partnering with a good friend of mine in Tampa Bay, which is where I'm speaking to you from today. Moved to Tampa. We started a business. That business started at the right time in the late 90s, and it uh, we did ex- very well in the U.S. We expanded across Canada. We expanded into the United Kingdom, Australia. Long story short, after running those businesses over a period of years, I met my wife over in England when I was running one of the businesses. We all went, ultimately decided we were going to sell everything, go back to Tampa. And I was, most people would say, and retire. I, I didn't say that because we were too young, we felt, to do that. So we came back to Tampa, settled down, and uh, started doing a lot of morning walks. And um, we had choice. We were blessed. 
we're like the dog that was chasing the car. We caught the car. Now, what are we going to do with it? So we started walking and talking and saying, you know, how do we want to spend our time? We're, we have choices. Very few people have. Uh, so after doing that for a while, we decided on three things. Uh, one was we were going to travel. We love to travel, but like many people in business, it wasn't intentional travel. We saw boardrooms. We saw taxis. We didn't see the cities we visited. So we wanted to map out the world beyond the USA. And I emphasize that. Discover the rest of the world first. So that was point one. We wanted to travel and do it our way. Second thing is we both independently before we left and once we came together had this overwhelming desire to give back. And a lot of people talk about giving back to him, but they don't, they talk about writing checks. We meant time, talent and treasure. So we decided we would get heavily involved in a nonprofit community, which we didn't, which we still do today. And then the third thing was, well, you know, how do we keep our minds active? People talk about retirement and they're playing Sudoku or pickleball or crossword puzzles. None of that was up our alley. So we said, we're going to start a website. Now, you're talking to people that have no background in technology, but we did have a background in business and we did know the kind of uh, website we would like to be greeted with every morning. That was about 12 years ago. We launched our first website venture called Biz Catalyst 360. It's now almost 12 years later. We've won a couple of awards. We've got about a thousand writers around the world. We published about 28,000 articles. And uh, frankly, we just keep building from there. Something you mentioned earlier was very important to our growth and to our ethos, if you will. And that is we decided if we were going to do this, we were going to do it for good versus for profit. Never did we realize just how powerful that was, Joanne, until we it gave us the ability to spread our wings and say to our writers, look, we don't have a marketing committee. We don't have people that we need to please other than ourselves. So spread your wings. Write about what matters to you, regardless of the subject. Some writers told us it was a writer's nirvana because all of the restrictions that they were used to in writing for places like Forbes and Huffington Post, they were gone. So now they could just take that blank sheet of paper and start writing. And uh, again, we didn't know how powerful that was, but the freedom to tell a writer, write when you want, as often as you want, about whatever you want, however many words you want, it just became the fuel behind our growth. And that's why we are as large as we are today. Last point is I would like to tell you there's a business plan. So many people ask us about that. There never has been. We are simply evolving based on what was going on in the world we live in, much of which we learn from reading what's been written and much of what we've learned from traveling the world. And uh, that's how we got here. Well, that's an amazing story and full disclosure to our audience. Um, some of my articles and some of my podcasts have been published by Dennis Patoko's Biz Catalyst 360. Now, that's not why he's on the show. That's, <laughs> that's just a part of our history. He is a friend. He is a friend of the podcast, and I treasure our relationship. So for him to say all of these things about what he's done and that it evolved is really big. That's the really big part for you listeners. You don't have to have that business plan. You don't need a business plan. If the bank needs a business plan for you to open up a bank account, whatever, that's fine. But when you're dealing with creative people, as Dennis and his wife, whose name I've forgotten, is, if I ever knew it, um, <laughs> if I ever knew it, is you do that. You know, it's like when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have to work nine to five. You might work six to two. You might work 11 to uh, 10. You evolve. If you keep on the right path, there's a lesson in here that you're learning from Dennis and his dreams. If you stay on the right path, you will be rewarded with what you need to move forward to the next step. Because people have to get that. Uh, if I can just interrupt you. So there's Absolutely. a quote that I've embraced over the years, Joanne, that just falls nicely into what you just said. And frankly, this could be the best de definition of our business plan. I'd like to give a credit to somebody. I don't know who said this, but it's faith is taking the first step when you don't see the whole staircase. I can't tell you how many of those steps we've taken. We've never seen the whole staircase, but we've learned through the, as the community has grown and as you continue to 
give back, it does come full circle. And there's always people out there that reach out to help lift us up because we haven't gotten it all right. We've made every mistake in the book. You know, we're not fearless, but we're brave. And that bravery comes from the risk taking that's supported by the community that's grown up around us. When you said that the first step is taking the, the faith is taking the first step, et cetera, there are many first steps. I think they're all first steps. Uh, I remember seeing a greedy card once and it on the front. It said somebody was climbing up the steps and it said face to face with the second step. Now, somebody <laughs> did write that. I'm sure if I you know, Googled the masters, they would it would pop up. But this first step issue is it's always a first step. Yes. Every time you turn in, a, you know, we have more than 360 degrees of direction you know, the micro directions that all of a sudden somebody goes, hey, what about this? And hmm, how does that feel? Will it fit with what we have going on? And which leads us into our main topic, our major topic is Dennis Patoko has something big going on and he wants to tell you about it. Uh, yes. Thank you for that. Um like many other people, you know, my wife, Allie, by the way, is her Thank name. Thank you. <laughs> we felt, we, we felt, you know, over the last couple of years, we felt as sequestered, for lack of a better term, as many other people do the pandemic, you know, both locally, nationally and internationally. And my wife is British and that stopped us from traveling. We used to go back and see her family a couple of times a year. So we were kind of pinned down here like a lot of people. Uh, we could still do what we do because what we do is virtual, but that's not the point. So April, early April this year, we decided we were going to get out of Dodge. We got on a train. We went coast to coast across America from Tampa, Florida, all the way to California and back. We covered almost 7,500 miles. The point of it, and we called this the 360 Nation Discovery Tour, which is another way of saying we just wanted to see people. We wanted to see middle, middle America, which is why we took the train versus an airplane, because on train in America, you come through small towns that you just wouldn't see on purpose by flying or by car. Uh, so we got a good sense of middle America, but here's what happened. Um, we discovered. Well, first of all, let me back up. We met with friends and family, but we intentionally circled the map whenever we travel now, because we've got so many writers everywhere. We look to see who do we know in that city or near that city. So we met with over a dozen of our writers, and these were just coffee meetings, not formal dinners. And as we started to meet with these folks, you know, you walk up to somebody, give them a handshake or a hug. We never realized just how isolated we've all become. Now, as I said earlier, a lot of that isolation was by mandate because of the pandemic. But it also seemed to us that too many people have now adapted to and kind of gotten comfortable with the fact that we're isolated because you can work from home. Now, you don't have to go out and necessarily meet people. Uh, so we rediscovered what we call the magic behind an actual handshake or a hug. And, and we saw as we were ending the trip and coming home just how energized these face to face contexts um, what a difference they made to each of those relationships. As I've said to many people, Zoom is nice and it has truly done a great job of filling the gap, but you just can't beat a handshake or a hug, period. So we came back and we said, we, uh, I'm going to go back to my banking career for just a minute. Over the 30 years I was in banking, I spent way too much time at conferences across the USA. And I frankly developed a real distaste for conferences. Too much glad handing, too many sales pitches, boring, repetitive speeches, all those things that, you know, you just can't be bothered with. Uh, so since we launched this thing called 360 Nation and Biz Catalyst, uh, we've been approached by a number of people wanting to say, look, you got this giant community. Joanne, you mentioned our big LinkedIn presence and mm -hmm. our Facebook presence. Don't you want to bring them all together? And we can do that for you and we can make a whole bunch of money. Now, as you know, we don't do things for money. So that was the backdrop of why we've never said yes to that. Then came the isolation awakening, as I'll call it. And we came back and said, look, we're going to have to rethink that. Uh, we, we felt, we felt like not only were we kind of uniquely positioned with this large audience and we had our humanity ethos behind us, but we almost felt obligated to create an opportunity to bring these people together and not just 12 coffees, but a whole bunch of people together so they could feel what we felt. 
Uh, we also said, we're, we're not going to do your classic conference. So rather than hire a, con- a, a promoter, we decided we're going to do it ourselves. And back to that, taking that first step, <laughs> when you don't know what the whole staircase looks like, a lot of good people rose up and helped us. And I'm happy to say in uh, just about six weeks ago, we launched what we call Encounter 360. It's not a conference. It's it, we We were intentional if you look at the web page for this in describing what it wouldn't be in other words it's not going to be a big crowd it's not going to be about making profit it's not going to be podium speeches team building powerpoints and all that stuff we decided we were going to bring to get together have some people that were going to speak to the group but not keynote speakers and the whole idea you know is to bring people together share fresh knowledge with them don't bore them to death And underneath all of that, we all know that's where community gets built. That's where the connections are made in between the sessions, after the sessions, in the evening, you know, things like that. Uh, We launched that again six weeks ago. We've limited it purposely to 50 people because we didn't want a big crowd. And I'm happy to say that as of today, with only 14 seats left, uh, our biggest challenge in doing this whole thing wasn't putting it together, wasn't figuring it out. Again, a lot of good people helped us. Our challenge was this, and you're going to love this, Joanne. Our challenge is what do we do if we make money? We, we don't want to make money. We want to break even. And so we talked, as we always do, to some good people that surround us and said, here's our challenge. And in the end, we came up with a great approach. It's, look, we're going to break even. If we don't break even, we will fund the difference. If we happen to make money, we're going to reallocate that money to our nonprofit community. We run another foundation. It's called Good Works 360. We're going to sprinkle that money into Good Works, and they're going to distribute it to good nonprofits around the world. And that got us over the ickiness of having to deal with money. Well, people are listening going, hmm, we're in business. Why are you feeling icky about money? You have to remember, listener, and as I advise my listeners week after week or podcast after podcast, re-listen to this podcast and take notes because you're <laughs> learn. I'm serious because you're learning, listeners, how to run a business, how you can run a business in your way, not somebody else's way. Nobody's dictating to Dennis and Allie on how to do things. Maybe they are that I don't know about, but, you know… <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have, you know, they're not following the quote unquote norm, which I despise with a passion anyway. So take notes and contact uh, Dennis Patoko. I'm going to give you his, everything is going to be on the page on my website. Dennis and all my guests have their own page with all their social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you wanted to get to him sooner rather than later, Dennis is, uh, Email address is biz, B I Z M A S M A S T E R S global, bizmasters global at gmail.com. And for those listening as well, Dennis is located in Tampa, Florida. He mentioned that at the beginning. So I suggest that you go to this particular link that Dennis is going to give us in a minute and check it out. Is there an entry fee? There is. It's uh, $299 to get in, and it covers two days plus your meals. Including meals? Yep. Okay. Okay, so if you're in the Tampa area, and I know some of my listeners are because I've already spoken to them about this, you have to go there. Um, I look at Tampa being Dennis's home base. I think it's a home base for this event, and I think it should be its home base forever because pe- people like to go to a place called home. <laughs> and when you have v- very many vacation spots in you know, California, Nevada, Alaska, Canada, whatever, it's not the same. So I know there's been talk about this. That is just my opinion. So... Okay, so why did you limit it to 50? Uh, Back to my experience with uh, conventions, as they call them. Yes. We wanted to keep intimate. I know 50 may not sound intimate, but that includes 12 of the people that are going to actually be doing what we'll call the sessions that are leading sessions. So you net that out, then you're down to maybe 28 uh, because we wanted to truly have the ability. It's amazing how fast two days go by 
We want people to actually have time to talk and get to know each other and not be lost in the crowd. If we were out to make money, people said we could have said 500 people, given the nature of the agenda. But that's a money making agenda. And, you know, maybe next time we'll be bigger somewhere else. People have said, can we do it on the West Coast? People have said, can we do it in Europe? We've said, yes, we'll consider that. But let's walk before we run. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I vote for home, so that's it. I eat Tampa. Um, well, you know, why would you? Never mind. Um, is there going to be an opportunity for all 50 of you, plus or minus, to sit down in the same room to eat? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. And I'm just going to add something I skipped over quickly. Yes, that's true. Um, we're all, we also announced this thing way in advance. It's not happening until March 22nd and 23rd of next That's year. That's tomorrow. And, and people say, why? And I said, well, think about this. If we announce it, what was this, uh, June, look upon it not as just coming together for two days to spend time with Dennis and Allie and a bunch of good people. This is Tampa Bay in late March. It's the absolute best time mm-hmm. of the year down here. The weather's beautiful. So take two days with us. But take the week. In fact, we negotiated with our hotel to block out rooms for the entire week and give everybody the same rate. So you can come three days early, stay three days late, and it won't make a difference. There we go, people. Isn't I mean, everything is covered in the sense that you can go to one spot and enjoy multiple excursions, multiple encounters. Exactly. So why did you choose the word encounter? Well, we didn't want it to be anything resembling a conference. That was the first word suggested to us. And frankly, we look at the definition of encounter. We put a lot of thought into this. And if you look at it, I don't have it in front of me in Webster's, but it truly is of the ilk of you and I coming to Joanne together, Joanne, and meeting. Uh, it, nothing virtual about it. Yeah, I think that virtual thing, I mean, for me, it was fine when people were locked down because I had gone virtual way before the pandemic. So uh, it just served me well. I don't travel and um, outside of maybe driving to Seattle or California, but um, that served me well. But now that people are tiptoeing outside, this is a great opportunity for them to take a giant step and go to Tampa. Well, and then back to the point, we felt that we were uniquely positioned by location and because of our large community to say, we'll open a door for you. We will welcome you, but here's a place to come. And um, many places now are doing conferences or doing what's called hybrid conferences. Hybrid, of course, you got some people there and some people on a Zoom screen. We said, no, no, we want people together. So you won't see hybrid in this. No, I appreciate that. And I'm sure that most of your, all of your guests do as well, because hybrid is exhausting. It is. It is. It's distracting from what you're trying to, in our opinion. But um, so that's the way we roll, as they say. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, and, and for people who are listening to this as well, not everything needs to be monetized. I mean, yes. Ali and Dennis have the opportunity and whoever else is on their immediate team, they have the opportunity to monetize this, but it's going to get out of hand sooner rather than later. So yeah. just leave it alone. There's nothing wrong with this because what they are doing is reaching out and contributing. This is a contribution. So what else would you like to tell us, Dennis? Well, You know, behind the scenes, as this thing has been morphing and growing, something you touched upon earlier that I just want to emphasize, and this is notion of having every, it's not an exact science. Banking was for me. You know, when you want to do something, you got to model it. You've got to justify it. You know, there are so many times that we have tripped and fallen and somebody helped us get back up again. And we try not to be perfect, even this gathering We've had people say, well, you've got to map this out. You've got to time it. No, I said, no, we want it to be kind of rough around the edges because now we're back to the way humanity works. It's not always perfect. You know, we've said for a long time behind the scenes that our job is to figure out what the world's trying to be and then help the world get there. And not that we can change the world individually, but if we can create positive ripples of change, either talking to you, Joanne, or people listening to this, and they walk away with one good thing they could do. 
we think that's what the world depends on us to do. You know, show up, be present, be the best we can. If you have the chance to give back, and again, we're blessed, do it. it it's not that complicated. You know, one person, one voice, one step at a time. It is amazing how those ripples of change can change lives. Well, you've said it all. Um I'm going to give you a website address, everybody, but it is also on bizcatalyst360.com. So it's biz, bizcatalyst, B-I-Z, catalyst360, numeric.com, slash, encounter, dash, 360, dash, Tampa Bay. And don't worry if you don't remember it because you have two choices, at least two. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can replay this, see what you missed. Or you can look at Dennis Patoko's page on my website or any other place that I have posted this, uh, this podcast. So give, give our audience your final words, Dennis. What can they do to change the world, to give back? What, what is your suggestion for imagining the world? That's an excellent question because as we started developing our, or growing ourselves uh, and trying to figure out this concept of rediscovering humanity, you know, we took for granted, Joanne, that when I say rediscover humanity, people kind of know what that means. And then it, we got questions coming in. So then is I want to do that. But I'm not quite sure how to do that. And so it dawned on us it was time to go back and rethink it. So we actually, I don't do it very often, but I wrote an article. It's on our website. If you go onto the website, you can search for it. It's called In Search of Humanity, Time to Do More. And what that was, it was at the time, this was about three years ago when I wrote this. It was 13 things that you could do starting tomorrow. And I'm going to give you an example in just a minute. And we published this and said to the world, here's kind of what we mean. But if you have any ideas, write to us. They did. We're now up to 38 items. So you could literally say, I'm going to print this out. In fact, you can download and print it out now and use it as a daily guide. But something as simple as show more compassion. Well, what does that mean? Well, during the pandemic, the best suggestion we could say to people, and it doesn't mean it has to be a pandemic. When you're done listening to this podcast today, pick up the phone, call somebody you know that lives alone, maybe they're elderly, and they would just love to hear a voice. And you're not calling them for because you need something. You're calling them to ask them how they're doing, but then you're going to just sit back and do something many of us just aren't good at. Listen. And when they're done talking, ask them some questions about what they told you. We've learned the value of something so simple, probably because we deal with a lot of senior citizens that are shut ins, as they say in our nonprofits, or the power that will have in their life that day is just remarkable. Well, that's amazing. People, go find that article and print it out, keep it available, and if you could do it once a day, if you could only do it once a week, if that's all you have the energy for, i.e. spiritual and emotional energy, that's acceptable as well. I want to thank Dennis Patoko, master of all domains, biz catalyst, <laughs> <laughs> for being here today, for uh, not inciting a compassion riot, but certainly speaking strongly about what he believes uh, to be true is that it is time for all of us to rediscover humanity at its best. Thank you, Dennis, for being here today. I appreciate it. And I know the listeners do as well. Thank Thanks you. So Thank you, Joanne. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project podcast. Please go to askjoannevictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.